Well, you've mentioned yourself that the COT theory is wrong because it fails and the facts do not agree. You also spoke about um, a figure from history, John Harrison, and I thought you made an interesting um, yeah. comparison. You made an excellent comparison to his situation then. He was measuring longitude. Is the situation worse now for a scientist to, to, to get recognition by, just by telling the truth? Well, I think it's always that it is worse, worse, yes, because the government uh, industrial international complex is, is so much more powerful. I mean, John Harrison was really uh, subjected to three forces. Uh, one was what the scientists thought, the other was what the Navy thought, and the third was what Parliament thought. And... Uh, Parliament and the Navy left things to the scientists, more or less, who were just wanted to make Harrison shut up because he was upsetting their little, their little nest. Right. Um, uh, and things only changed when the Navy stepped in and said, look, Harrison is saving lives. We can't go on losing people, killing them, having them killed in storms because we don't have equipment to navigate when Harrison could provide it. And it was that which changed things. And then Parliament listened and told the Royal Society to shut up. Um, no, I don't think anything will happen similarly now until, unfortunately, more people are killed by weather events, uh, some of which could be predicted, and uh, which the standard meteorologist uh, will not acknowledge. I mean, for example, a number of people died in... Uh, road accidents in England last, uh, and all over Europe last winter because the authorities ran out of road salt. Um, they ran out of road salt because of the Met Office's stupid global warming forecast which said we'd have a mild winter. And of course there's things like uh, what happened in Russia and, uh, and uh, Pakistan. Now we didn't predict the Pakistan floods but such things are possible. And if the United Nations seriously want to save lives, they should make use of our science. However, they, they, they don't. They're not interested. There's going to be a meeting in uh, Boulder uh, this week of so-called uh, climate scientists who are busy meeting to try and work out how to forecast things. Now, we were not invited to this. They know they can't forecast things. So you I have, on. Say. I mean, you're on record as being probably the most accurate weather forecaster on the planet yeah, well in terms of long range yeah right and you'd think that you're the sort of person that they'd be most interested to be included in that conference but they haven't even approached you no they haven't even approached us have you offered to your services well, to them uh, I, we could do uh, i think it's probably over now or well underway but um, yes uh, i mean you know i'm um, easy to find. If they wanted me to come, they could have asked. Uh, I would be happy to offer publicly here, here and now, if there's any of them listening, but I don't expect there are any listening. It, it seemed to have been an event stitched up between the leading global warming authorities. It's not a public event. It's uh, they yeah. decided to meet each other, you see. Yeah. Um, but of course, you're right. If they are serious about wanting to... Uh, uh, reduce hardship from floods uh, and droughts and so forth and save lives, they should involve us. The whole climate, if you'll forgive the pun, of the politics <laughs> and the media, the politics and the media all working together to espouse their theories about um, global warming, which they've had to uh, back pedal on a little bit um, and I will come to climate gate I will get to that yeah, but yeah. Um, the whole environment is so corrupt and so deceptive uh, when I speak to people in the pub and say that global warming is a lie a big scam to get more money off you they uh, I was chased around the pub one night but mm. people don't get it they don't and uh, you can't blame them with the, the amount of mind control from the television the BBC I mean can you give an example in history where science has been so utterly corrupted as now? Um, uh, no, uh, I don't think I can. Uh, I mean, obviously in single countries it was corrupted uh, by uh, Stalin. Uh, you, you 
know, they imposed certain theories and scientists didn't agree got into very grave trouble, and also by Hitler, uh, who, again, uh, you know, concocted theories of the master race and, and so forth, and scientists who didn't agree, uh, well, got into very serious trouble. Now, but those were only in single countries. Now we have a worldwide phenomena where all, well, nearly all governments and the United Nations are in this together in order to promote carbon trading and uh, create a bubble of false value, which they imagine might uh, save the current economic situation. Um, and the tragedy is that the developing world go along with this in order to accept begging bowl handouts yeah. from the West. Yeah. Um, when, of course, the whole thing is designed to control the developing world and uh, make the developing world rely on uh, Western uh, technology, high-tech solutions to any problem they care to uh, either find or create, uh, uh, and so forth. So the bubble of false value is created around that. Now, I don't think it'll work. I think the developing world, will, when they sit down, they're going to say, well, we're not going to spend three times as much as you on having electricity in Africa uh, because you want us to have wind farms which aren't work or solar power which cost three times as much. I think they will say no. However, of course, because of the way the Western investment operates, that means the development of Africa will take longer. Now, I support the electrification of Africa, whereas Greenpeace and the like, whatever they say, in reality, they don't care a damn about the... Uh, uh, living standards of well, people in Africa. Well, they were infiltrated long ago. The Lord Monckton had to himself had to leave because yes. he he understood sure. very well what was happening. I mean, the Club of Rome got together about thirty years ago, and decided how can we uh, get as much money off the slaves as possible. We need to invent. Mm -hmm. We need to, and they physically got together and invented. Uh, a global warming will say that the very air we breathe is a poison and they must have had a good laugh <laughs> yes. and and the only companies that are going to be allowed to uh, to pollute the planet will be their own special companies their, their own special banking illuminati black nobility mm -hmm. corporations uh, mm -hmm. i mean all you have to do is look at bp at the moment so so this scam yeah. was a premeditated yeah, premeditated yeah. genocide would you agree? Well, I, I, would, I would say so, yes. Um, because, well, two things on that. One is the, the um, oil companies. They're painted by Greenpeace as being the enemy. But actually, they're part of the, the game. Uh, because they gain massively when energy prices go up. All of a sudden, shale oil or, or whatever, difficult to extract oil, becomes valuable. So their asset values escalate. Uh, and they can therefore borrow money, and the uh, profits go up as long as the uh, price goes up. Um, and the, well, well, I mean, that is a, a very significant uh, factor, yeah. Well, Al Gore has been paraded throughout the planet as the all-seeing prophet and saviour of the global warming, <laughs> globally warming industry, and as David Bellamy, your colleague, so wonderfully pointed out, that indeed it is an industry the total, um, yeah. the, the title of Gore's film was an inconvenient truth. Well, the people seeking the truth are, in most cases, trying to get the truth out to the public. They are an inconvenience to his carbon scam. I mean, Al Gore said yeah. that the, Al Gore said that the science is settled. Is it? <laughs> well, I would say anyone in history who says science is settled are trying to hide something. I mean, the Royal Society said to Harrison, science was settled and that new, everything Newton said was right and what anybody else said later that would just be not to be relied on, you see. Um, all, all major scientific understandings and developments have been preceded by people saying that their existing understandings were settled. Uh, I mean, that happened when Einstein came along with his theories and when Mills Law came along with the theories of the uh, atom or when people came along with theories of continental drift. I mean, it, only, it, it took 10 years to get the theory of the continental drift established. I mean, uh, <laughs> we've already been going uh, 30 years or at least 20 years on, on this complete nonsense. So this is a harder number. But, you know, it, it, well, it will be defeated in the end.